All right, welcome to another video for the vintage fan collectors and electrical enthusiasts of all stripes out there. What we have here tonight for your amusement is a selection of vintage Granger catalogs from the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. And we're going to take a look at the highlights, mainly the fans, fluorescent lights, a few other things here and there. I know there's a lot of guys out there who love geeking out to old catalogs. Which, by the way, reminds me, for the vintage ceiling fan collectors out there, for those of you who like fans from the 70s, 80s, 90s, there is a website. I am not affiliated with this in any way. If you have not heard of this, you should check it out. It's iheartfans.me. And if you go to the link iheartfans.me slash catalog, that will take you directly to the thumbnails for the Vintage Ceiling Fan Brochures. Uh, they got some new uploads up there recently. There's a 1979 Casablanca brochure, some, a few other really nice, rare vintage ones that are up there. Full color scans, um, just gorgeous stuff you can really geek out to and see really cool stuff from all different brands. Brands you've heard of, brands you haven't heard of, brands that still exist, brands that don't exist. Cool stuff, so definitely check that out. And by the way, again, no affiliation. I don't know who runs that website, but whoever you are out there, thank you. Thank you so much for what you do for this community, for taking the time to scan everything and to upload it and the money to host that on a web server and to host that website, to put that out there for free and not charge anybody for it. It's very generous of you. And I know there's a lot of collectors out there who love what you're doing and really appreciate it. So, with that said, and please excuse if you see my smoke blowing across the camera. I am a pack and a half a day smoker, and I don't mean cigarettes. So, into these Granger catalogs now. We have a selection of four here. The first one dates from 1946 and came out just after the end of World War II. There are a bunch of references in here to metal shortages and just things generally being unavailable because of wartime-related problems. We'll come back to that a bit later. Um, this is undated. I cannot find a date on it anywhere. It is somewhere from the early 50s. This book is from 1956. Um, all we know about this for sure is it's between these two. So it's somewhere between the 40s book and the 50s book. And um, <clears throat> looking at it in depth, it appears to be from the early 50s, maybe 51 or 52. So we have our 40s book, our early 50s book, our late 50s book, and then this book from 1964. So these are the Granger catalogs, also known as motor books back in the day, that you would use to see what they had available and to order from. <clears throat> so, as I said, we're going to go through the highlights, bring these to you so that you can see these things for yourself without having to spend the money. If you uh, are interested in seeing these sorts of catalogs and you don't want to have to spend the money to buy them yourself on eBay, which, by the way, is where I got these, then this video will serve as uh, your ability to flip through these through my camera lens. So, <coughs> let's start with these first few books here. Now, we're going to exclude that last one for a minute and talk just about these first three. One of the interesting things that these have in common is that inside the front cover of each is a letter written and signed by Bill Granger, who founded the company. And while the signature is just sort of photocopied and stays the same, you'll notice that they use a different photograph of him. So you can actually watch him age through the years. And it's funny, this photo from right after the war, he looks so much skinnier. It's in a black suit. I mean, it's just, it's a certain look. You can tell the country's just been through a war. And I do find it interesting. Now, I'm recording this video. It's November of 2020. And we're going through the COVID coronavirus pandemic right now. It's very interesting if you read what he wrote here in this letter. Now, granted, this is from 1946 again. And I'm just going to read this to you real quick says, things are looking better. It looks like things should get better fast during 1946, but please don't expect too much too soon. The fractional horsepower motor situation should improve slowly now that manufacturers are getting higher prices. 
Don't forget that the demand for fractionals is the biggest in history and will take a lot of time to catch up on deliveries. More of those long-awaited pre-war appliances will be coming through in 1946 as labor, management, and material problems are worked out. During the hectic months of reconversion yet to follow, please continue to be patient about deliveries and depend upon us to do the best humanly possible for you. Next year at this time, I sincerely hope that things will be normal again. What's that last line again? Next year at this time, I sincerely hope that things will be normal again. And it just struck me reading that. It's from 1946, and a modern CEO in 2020 could make the same statement in a press release, and it would apply completely, that last sentence at least. So, let's go back and take a look at one other cool thing on the cover, just to show you how old this is. Look at where the warehouses are listed here. Make sure this is in good camera frame. All right. Get the light on this where you can see it without a glare. Look at the phone numbers. Well, you wouldn't even know unless I told you. I guess a lot of you that are very young. These are phone numbers. Now, this is from the era. This is so old where you would pick up the phone and there would be a human operator at the other end. Number, please. He would say... Get me Victor 8472. One moment, sir. And they would manually connect your call by plugging a stereo jack into a, a switchboard. Insane. But uh, yeah, this is like something from an old family guy or something. These are just insane. These phone numbers, Underhill, Central, Garfield. Very, very cool. You can tell which parts of the country are bigger by which have like a, a five-digit phone number. See how it's one digit, then a hyphen and four? And of which just have a, a simple four digit. Very interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now we're not gonna look at every page in the book. I've gone through and we're gonna look at just the highlights that I think are relevant to collectors of vintage fans, uh, vintage fluorescent lighting, and um, maybe some other vintage appliances in general. Now, if you have something specific you want to see, leave a note in the comments. And uh, if there's enough people that want to see specific things out of these books, I may do a follow-up video in the future where we cover those pages. So having said that, let's move on to uh, page five. Ooh, I already went too far. where you will see that there is a kit of 12 condensers. Now, a condenser is a capacitor, which is another old-fashioned term for it, but look at the packaging. It's a sack. It's a literal bag with a string drawn around it. So you could literally just order a sack of capacitors in 1946. A sack of capacitors right there. Skipping ahead to page 11. This is the first images in this book of fans. So taking a look here. I can bring this up to the camera a little bit. So you can see what uh, appears to be... Well, that's odd. That's a movie projector. That sort of doesn't belong. But in this ad for shaded pole motors, uh, you have what appears to be a package exhaust fan... Uh, maybe a desktop oscillating fan, a f uh, furnace boost fan, window fan, kitchen exhaust, maybe just a general industrial exhaust fan. Look at these prices. The shade pull motor starts at $2.06. Now, you'd have to put that through the inflation calculator and see that's 1946. See what that equates to in 2020 dollars or whenever you're watching this video. Go ahead and move on to page 18 here. We're going to see if I could, instead of having to pick that up every time, if we can just use Zoom. Okay, I'm not so sure about the quality at that Zoom level. We'll take it off just a hitch. Okay. Now, this is something I found interesting. Now, granted, this would have been a tremendous amount of money, $61.00. In, in those prices is just, I'm sure, that's probably a thousand bucks in today's money. But this is very interesting. This is a hook-on 
volt ammeter. So this, it just surprised me because I thought this was a modern invention. I did not know that this existed in 1946, but this is what we call an amp clamp nowadays. Uh, you can use this to test the power load uh, of a motor, any, any load on a circuit, uh, by just clamping this around the hot wire. And it gives you a non-contact, you don't have to have any bare wires, any probes, um, it gives you a non-contact way to determine the current flow in a wire. Very, very interesting to learn that they had that in 1946. I would love to find one, especially with that mechanical dial. That looks super cool. Okay, so we're gonna skip ahead now to page 32. Again, we're just really checking out the highlights. And the highlight here are these appliances. Appliances soon available from Granger's. Watch for notice. Oh man, they might be coming out in 1947. <laughs> Check out. These are, these are things I'm laughing because these are, of course, things that you would find at an antique store nowadays. It's just fun seeing them in the future tense instead of the past tense. So you have an iron, a well, clothes iron, a waffle iron, a toaster, an electric clock, and that looks like an electric space heater of some variety. Okay, so skimming ahead to page 48 is going to bring us to the fluorescent light section. And we're going to take a look at some of these interesting vintage fluorescent lights here. We're just going to kind of go through. And of course, you know, if you're really into this stuff, you'll be able to just pause the video and study and read whatever interests you with this. So Sylvania, they were definitely a big, big name brand, even as far back as the, this is the World War II era. So we've got, okay, now this is Mitchell. This is another brand. So we've got the open end version and the closed end. You'll see on the, that's, that's the only difference. Cold volt unit. I'm guessing that's some sort of cold start fixture. And here we have one that's suspended from the ceiling. Now, I remember a lot of fixtures like that growing up. Where I grew up in New Jersey and New York City, there were and I'm, there probably still are in 2020, but at that time when I was young a long time ago, there were a ton of buildings with lights like this. All the schools that I grew up going to, churches, any, I mean, a lot of stores, even some restaurants, older department stores, hardware stores, pretty much any commercial, anything that was not a residential setting, um, you would commonly see, and again, very vintage style. <coughs> I remember grocery stores with those. There's some fluorescent starters and lamp holders. Pretty sure they don't go for 19 cents anymore. <laughs> 17 and a half cents, man, a half a cent. <laughs> that is awesome. Look at this Detecto Ray electric eye. Now we use something very similar to this uh, to trigger the doorbell at my store, Tubular Tokes. The, uh, it's a Radio Shack unit from the 1980s, but again, something that surprised me to know that they had something exactly like that right back in World War II. But when you think about it, I mean, World War II and this book, this is basically only 20 years before we put a man on a moon, and 20 years ago was the year 2000. I mean, 20 years is not that long a time when you think about it. Go ahead and see some more. I love some of the, the vintage artwork too, where they show the, the people. See this guy with his hat on right there? If I bring this up a little bit, you can. So. And they have like just some fluorescent desk lamps and such.
Now here's the selection of doorbells, door chimes. Again, this is 1946 Granger catalog. Another thing interesting you'll notice is when you look at the item numbers, they're exactly like Granger used today. It's five characters in the form of a digit, a letter, and then three more digits. And if you go on Granger's website or look in their catalog in 2020, that is exactly how things look now. It has never changed. So just interesting. Some different chimes there. I'll tell you what else is interesting. I did not know that they had like Crest Sonicares. Six dollars for this electric toothbrush in the 1940s. Now, granted, seeing that it has a two-prong plug and knowing there was no GFCI back then, I don't know that I would stick that thing in my mouth. It says right there it's 110 volts AC. So, just something to think about. Here's something Granger probably does not sell anymore. Here's ashtrays, an all-metal smoker stand, pre-war merchandise, pre-war price. Referring, of course, to World War II. $5.95 for this, if you buy 10 of them. <laughs> All right. And then let's get to the fan section. Let's go through time clocks, thermostats, gas valves. Okay. So you'll notice they say, Fan items soon available from Granger's. We have a heat booster, heat circulator, furnace fan, and kitchen vents. This looks very similar to like a Vornado style fan to me. Advertising the General Electric motor right there. See, we can take the zoom maybe off just a hair. You can see the two pages better. So here is, now, when they say furnace air conditioner, by the way, air conditioner does not mean what you think it means. It's not the modern sense. They mean as in it conditions the air by filtering out pollen. It doesn't change the temperature of it in any way. So this is what they were selling for attic fans in 1946. For this particular year, this is the only option in the catalog. And you'll notice you don't get much. You, you get blades, motor, and the mount for the motor, but that's it. There's no Venturi shroud. There's no frame. They called this KD, or knocked down, which means, well, you get exactly this. It's just not built up. And the only difference is that you could get either a three-blade version or a four-blade version. The RPMs are the same. The CFMs are not. The prices are not. So, again, this would seem to be a case of, you know, post-World War II, cheaper rationing. Save the metal, just get three blades. It might move a little less air, but it's cheaper because you're only paying for three blades. Nowadays, we live in a world where you just would not price fans by number of blades. Now, here's where they're selling just blades on their own. Aristocrat, you'll notice it's like a, a trademark. They got a registered trademark symbol all over the place. Trademark registered. This uh, Cutler Hammer fan switch right here Looks exactly like the switch in the Westinghouse Power Air fan I have. A few other vintage fans. And that thing is from the early 40s. So that makes sense. Now here's some industrial air circulators. Big old cage on that mama right there. Interesting. I sell just the blades, just the frame, just the motor. I mean, you could just build your own fan. And here's where they have some Dayton exhaust fans. I'm guessing that Ilg built that for Dayton. You know, Dayton's just a brand name. I don't think they actually ever have built anything or had any of their own factories. I could be wrong about that. 
but I'm under the impression that they've always purchased from other companies and just white labeled or private labeled it. Uh, another thing I did not know existed in the World War II era are these roof vents. Now, I was under the impression that these came out in the 1970s as part of the energy conservation movement. Um, but no, apparently $5.39 bought you one of these, at least the smallest one. They came in several different sizes. So those were available way back in the day. Got fans for hay curing. Now, when it says Northwest exhaust fans, I don't know if that is in any way kin to Northwest Envirofan, who makes ceiling fans nowadays and makes the Dayton branded uh, ceiling fans that Granger sells or has in the past. But <clears throat> in any case, Northwest exhaust fans. And of course, this is clearly pre OSHA. There's no grill of any kind around that fan. And again, OSHA hasn't been to Thailand recently, but that's a separate video. Another fan frame kit. We got some shutters here. Turn to the last page of the book. They got some more Northwest air circulators. Got, uh, well, they're labeled pollen filter, window fan. It'd be very interesting to find like one of these pollen filters when turned up just new old stock, new in the box. It'd be very cool. So, now these are sold out for 1946, but it is interesting they made a fan this big. That's not a model, that's a full-scale woman, that's a human being. So, when you look and read the fine print, that fan, uh, 104 inches, and I'm not that good at math, but that's, that's 4 inches less than 9 feet. 9 feet is 108 inches, so it's 8 feet, 8 inches. Now, if you think that you only have an eight-foot ceiling in your house, that fan literally would not fit floor-to-ceiling in the average American home. So if that's a five-foot-two eyes of blue woman right there, and that's an eight-and-a-half-foot-tall fan, that is to scale. That is a fucking massive fan. And it makes me wonder how big that base would have to be to make that safe so there's no chance of it tipping over because somebody was running and grabbed onto that to stabilize themselves and the thing tipped over it i mean that would kill someone and it makes me also wonder well if this thing is to scale relative to that that thing's got to be like a 48 inch wide floor mounted pedestal fan that would be insane so just cool to have this kind of old material be able to go through it they are really pushing that smoker stand, man. I got it in two places in the same book. All right. So that's the end of the first book. Let's move on to the second one. And we're skipping ahead in time from 1946 to an unknown point, but this is somewhere uh, probably in the early 1950s. It's We can tell from the number because this is number 191 that we were just in. This is number 191. This is number 203. Now, the next one that we have a confirmed date on is uh, number 256 from 1954. So, obviously, the, uh, the 203 is a lot closer to 191, both number-wise and also visually. They look the same, versus this, clearly several years later. So, I'm guessing that this book we're about to get into here um, is from somewhere between maybe 1948 to 1952, but that's just a personal guess. Now, this is very fan-heavy. If you're into vintage fans, if you're into the AFCA antique fans, you're going to love this book right here. In fact, it's so full of fans that it's got an extra little advertising fan leaflet tacked on to the... Let's see, we got the uh, window exhaust fan. Now, you'll notice, again, there's that KD that's knocked down, meaning unassembled. It's a parts kit. So, yeah, you have to get the... Put it together, but twenty three ninety five, what a bargain. So, we got fans in the cover of this book. We got the exhaust fan and a fluorescent light, side by side. And, uh, Granger's all about fans this time. 
According to the dealers, I, I have no clue what his voice sounded like, but this is my impression of Bill Granger anyway. According to the dealers I have talked with lately, this will be a boom season for fans, particularly air circ. I mean, what the hell kind of fan is an air circulator? Everyone wants a fan when the summer sun sizzles the air, and you've got to deliver fans when customers ask for them, or no sale. Dealers will take the most money out of the fan market are laying in fan stocks now. They are displaying and advertising fans. They are lining up sales crews to call on stores, offices, factories, churches, amusement centers, etc. to pick up orders with a demonstrator fan. The powerful heat chasers on back page of this catalog sell themselves on first demonstration. They won't be plentiful this season, but the smart dealer who protects himself with stock now will reap big, easy profits. Ha 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 profits. All right, let's check out some of these profit fans here. So we've got, looks like we got two speed exhaust fan going on here. 10-inch Dayton kitchen ventilator. That's really cool. It's a package unit. Grill on the inside. Then that's actually a grill you cannot stick your fingers in, it looks like. That's smart. There's an electric juicer. Something, again, I did not know they had back quite that far. I've also never seen an electric juicer with a toggle switch in the front before. Everyone I've ever used has been pressure activated just by pushing down the orange or whatever you're juicing, you know, right there on the top. So we're going to skip way ahead from page 5 to page 56 in this book. 56, where are you? Okay. So we have a Dayton uh, window fan, window exhaust fan. This is a little giant furnace fan. It's interesting. It looks like a little, that's the logo of maybe Kinko's or something. Maybe the old uh, singular guy. But you take this cageless fan and, according to the directions here, stick the entire thing inside your furnace. <laughs> so you got a comfort air fan and heater. That's interesting. Something that dispenses vaporized insecticide, the automatic exterminator. Now, that looks deadly. This book does have an interesting number of... 1950s deadly home appliances that would be totally illegal today. And also things that you wouldn't think of Granger for, like a record player. I mean, it's just not a product one would typically buy at Granger. At least not nowadays. I mean, maybe people did back in the 50s. I don't know. I wasn't around. Again, with the uh, deadly home appliances here, we have a electric bottle warmer. A plug-in water heater. Now, again, I'm going to point out this is a two-prong plug. No grounding. No GFCI. The entire thing is made out of metal, and you immerse it in water. What could possibly go wrong? $3.95. It's all it takes to kill yourself. A Vivitone or Vivitone electric massager. Look at those ladies' nails. So ladylike. We've got some uh, some radios. Of course, it's the tube era, advertising the number of tubes in them. Five tubes considered standard for any decent radio back then. Less than five was a radio you didn't want to have. That 5T right here, that's what that abbreviates. That's five tubes. So then we get into the door chimes. This is the first time that we see a brand. Now we've got Rittenhouse written up there. So these are the same chimes that were in the last catalog with no brand name. And these may not be Rittenhouse. It may just be on this page. Not sure without reading closer. Got uh, three voltages for transformers down here. Order chimes by mail. Well, this one really got me. You're never gonna guess what's on the next page. Booze set. Who the hell would get a booze set at Granger? The motor store. <laughs> You'll sell hundreds of these low cost barrettes because they have become the life of small parties everywhere, ideal for homes 
offices it said this is so mad man the idea that you would buy a booze set at granger take to your office and only two dollars and 37 cents is an unbelievable price for a 19 piece booze set for your office you will not find this in the modern granger catalog i guarantee Bring over one page we have what looks like a very fancy camera, an 8mm projector. Again, stuff that you just don't associate with modern Granger. Now, in my area, in 2020, Granger is doing advertising. They're on the radio at my work all the time. But they're not advertising booze sets for the office, I'll tell you that. Here's, an ins Here's where we start getting into the fluorescent lamps. Now we've got Circlean or Circline, depending on how you say it. I say Circlean. Fluorescent lamps, floor lamps, and table lamps. And almost all of these lamps, in fact, maybe all of them, are fluorescent lamps. Here's one that's built into a wood shelf. It looks like a shelf light. I do like the Art Deco styling on that particular unit right there. That's pretty cool. It's got a pull chain too. Looks like it could be uh, perhaps like over a bathroom vanity. Here's the Fluoro Ray brand. You can see they have some really cool Art Deco designs. It'd be cool to find one of these fluorescent testers. Checking out the different fixtures. Again with Sylvania. Here's the starters, lamp holders. I don't know what Sheldon is, but it's a flash starter, so there you go. Here's where you get some of those ceiling suspended. I swear I had to do a double take. I thought that was an LED. Those look to me, to my modern eye, those look like little cob leds you know like a kind of lamp you might find on amazon today although you have probably the modern one might have three prongs okay we've got mitchell branded fixtures Starting to get into, I said it's an office fixture. It says right there for stores, offices, and large rooms. I find that interesting. They call this an adapt adapter unit. You just plug it right into. Here's a diffuser. Looks like. That's pretty much the end of those. Progress Lighting, that was a brand way back when, still is. All copper. Now, it's funny, you can go into Home Depot in 2020 and buy, I think they call it a jelly jar. Uh, you can still buy this style, more or less. I mean, it doesn't look exactly like any one of these, but it's sort of a hybrid between these two. Um, you can buy something that looks just like that nowadays. It is that same glass, but... It's amazing how some some styles really do seem timeless. So skipping ahead now to page 88. Here is an intercom system. This is years before Newtone got into the game. They have a talkophone intercom system here. And you'll notice they talk about the different ways you can set it up. Master selective, super selective, Looks like a pentagram somehow. S combination, master. I mean, really interesting that you would do this stuff back in this era. Okay, and we're gonna get into the fan section now. It's the back of the book, page 109. So we got the fan blades again. Still with the aristocrat, three blade, four blade. I don't know why the attic fan blades are specifically different, but I'm sure it explains it in that text if I take the time to read it. So we've got the Northwest exhaust fans. Shutters. You could still buy Dayton automatic shutters. And boy, would it be a trip 
if it was still the same model number, catalog number, you know, for a 12-inch or a 16-inch or whatever Dayton shutter nowadays, it'd be crazy. If you kept the same model number for 80 years, uh, same knockdown fan from before, but you'll see now they also offer versions that are, you know, fully ready to go. Turn key out the box. Also some very retro looking thermostats. They've got that sort of Art Deco streamlined look you expect from the early 50s. It's so at the end of the book now, it's the index right there. Now, hell, that index itself might interest some of you. And here's some uh, various window fans. It's a filter fan, it uses dust up filter. Attic fans with motors. Well, yes, I, I would certainly hope so. So you'll notice that they have taken the woman out, the scale model woman that was in last one. Well, she's gone. It's a three speed fan control thing is huge. Anti hay fever vent does work of a hundred dollar unit. All right, let's move on to this book. Just getting into page two. We start right off the beginning with fans. Now, the fans are in the beginning of this book. This one, we're skipping forward to late summer of 1954. Okay. And uh, this time the fans are right at the front, which makes sense because, you know, it's summer. But hassock fan, floor fan. They have quite a few more fans this time. You also notice the cages starting to come closer and closer together. Not as close as modern cages are. Well, I say modern. You should see my fan from Thailand. Here we have some window fans. Tell you what, Dayton is probably one of the oldest American industrial brands that's still in existence. They have been really at it for a long time making fans and motors, huh? Now here is an actual air conditioner. I mean, one that, you know, does like the modern sense of the word. So this is a three quarter ton window AC um, for $250.77. Now that is in 1954 dollars. And my rough built-in mental inflation calculator is to multiply by 10 for the 1950s. So that's probably $2,500, give or take, in today's money. Maybe 2,600 now. We've got continuous ongoing inflation, but really interesting. So then we get into the desk fans. We got the 16 inch, 10 inch oscillating bargain, $9.60. Here's those big whole house. I mean, 30 inches for a window fan. <clears throat> that is huge. I mean, if the blade diameter is 30 inches, then the entire frame, I mean, the, the, the size window that you would have to have to accommodate this whole frame box for a 30 inch diameter, but that'd be a, a huge window. I'm assuming that would be like a commercial window, like you see in a, a church sanctuary, you know, that's 12 feet tall or something. Cause hell, even this 24 inch one here is offices, stores. It's interesting, window fan motor reversing switch right there. Here's where they get into whole house fans. Got timers, thermostats, mercury time switch. Now you'll notice that nowadays at the top of the page in the early 50s, they're giving the full size 
I don't want to call it advertising, but you know what I mean, to the already made up fans. And then down here is a much smaller little section for the bargain knockdown ones, which remember a couple of years ago were the only thing they had. So you can see just how they progressed over time. Now here's where you can buy a guard by itself, a attic fan base and drive. I mean, just all the, all the various parts just to make your own fan, or I guess repair your fan. Build it yourself window fan kit, easily assembled, $6.80. And they start getting, and this is a pretty cool home laundry vent right here. So you see that uh, Broan, or Broan, depending on how you say it, uh, was a brand back then. You could still get the, their bathroom fans. They still make them now, I believe. Here's a, a three-speed wall fan switch. I have seen that switch in real life over the years. Really cool. So here are some different exhaust fans, square looking ones, round ones, all different blades. Here's those now you'll notice they have dropped the aristocrat. It looks like it's the same blades, but they're not calling them that anymore. There's that giant industrial cooler again. All right, so skipping ahead to page 67. This is just a quick appliance detour for guys that are into vintage vacuum cleaners. Here are some early 1950, well, 1954, remember, canister vacuum cleaners. And uh, a dust buster. That's pretty cool. All right, skipping ahead to page 82. We get into the fluorescent section. <clears throat> Again, this is the 1954 book. So you'll see we have a bunch of different types. Modern circline fixtures. Strip lights. I've, these are very vintage, especially with those concentric circular trim rings. Saw a lot of those growing up in houses that were built in the 50s and 60s. We get into the louvered units. Here's a uh, lavalier pull chain switch for 66 cents. So these are uh, Mitchell brand fluorescent light fixtures. reflector type units. All right, and then skipping ahead to page 104. That's gonna take us to the fan section. Uh, again, we see the wind-driven fans, but this is the first time that I've seen a this style, a dome power attic vent fan. So this is 1954. Again, this is something I did not know existed back in the 1950s. This is another product I thought came out of somewhere in the 70s. But uh, no, this is something you would get way, way back in the day. Got a furnace fan going on over here. Heat booster. So that's it for that one. And then we can skip ahead now, literally a decade from 1954 to 1964, and also a season. 
because we're gonna go from summer to winter. So not as big an emphasis on fans, obviously. But then again, these were apparently printed for each branch because this is for Jacksonville, Florida, back when that was area code 305. Back in the day, 305 was the area code for the whole state of Florida. But uh, nowadays that just covers Miami. And even then it's split. They have a few different area codes down there. So anyway, into this book, we're gonna start right in onto page 65. A lot of changes in just the general format and look of this book. There's no note from Bill Granger on the front. It just launches right into products. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I know something I thought was interesting. Over here, we have a fan reversing switch. So you see CCW and CW, it's counterclockwise and clockwise. I don't know what that's for. I've never seen one of those. It'd be cool to find one. I did find it interesting to see this dimmer switch that looked very modern. That looks like something you could find today at Home Depot. $9.99, not a bad price. Really interesting. So skipping ahead to page 76. Get it back in the frame there where you can read it too. All right, this is the fan section. Who knows for the first time a plastic blade fan. This thing it did not have in earlier years. Fan kits, which we've seen before. Get to the roll around on the floor fans, pedestal fans. That looks like a very modern guard. That looks like it would actually probably meet modern standards. Paragon is still in business making timers. Just some more general big old belt driven fans. starting to see some very modern looking fan designs they did not have in previous years. Guard mounted fans, you just buy that like that. No frame or anything, just mounted on a guard. Explosion proof fans, spray booth exhaust fans. We start getting into the pro am but that's the same logo, man. Tell you what, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Here's the, you know, the kitchen, bathroom, exhaust fans. And I believe Broan is still in business making a selection of exactly this sort of fan. All right, skipping ahead to page 216. It's a little too far. Let's see. Uh, so I said 216, right? Sewing machines. Okay, now this is where they get into, uh, I believe these are all electric clocks. But, and I'm not into clocks or anything, but I did find it interesting how very, very 60s some of these designs are. I mean, these are big. It's 22 inches. This is a giant 24 inches. These are those huge wall clocks that you would see uh, perhaps on the living room wall or the entry foyer wall in a mid-century modern home. Got the 
It's just a very starburst, very cool. I've never actually seen those advertised for sale before. All right, then skipping ahead to page 243. Oh, hello, Bomber. Are you talking to Daddy? I'm almost done with the video. Then it'll be kitty time. So we're going to wrap up with the lighting section here. And uh, really cool mid-60s, very, very mid-century. These bullet lights right here. Oh, my gosh, so cool. These kind of with the starlight effect with the little holes pierced in them. Oh, man. Go through a few pages of just really nice mid-century. Again, with that, that, that looks new. That looks like it could be sold in 2020. That dimmer looks new. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? That caught me for a minute. I thought it was Etsy. I was like, wait, what? No, it's Esty. Now, that's the thing I did not know. They had flicker flame bulbs. That's something else I thought was relatively modern. I did not realize they had flicker flame bulbs back in the 60s. This is, again, I think they sell that at Home Depot still nowadays. The base, they definitely do. The globe, maybe not. Not with those ribs in it. But something very similar to that you could still buy now. Like a giant pear sticking out of your ceiling. This is another fixture they still sell. There's a guy in a suit and tie on the phone. Probably not an advertisement you would see anymore. Should we get into some of these fluorescent lights? Uh, look at their Granger salesman. He's got a briefcase. He's got a fedora. Oh my gosh. The good old days. Get into some fancy fluorescent framed medicine cabinets. Rapid start of fluorescence. They don't have to send a telegram to request permission. Prismatic lens. Some of this stuff's perfectly modern. You might find that still for sale nowadays. There's a louvered one. And then last but not least, here we go. Stamina and canopy sets. It's really cool. So that pretty much wraps it up. Again, if there's anything you want to see specifically, leave a note in the comments. I'm really pushing those toothbrushes, huh? Cordless, too. That's interesting. You would not think that there'd be a battery cordless. Just amazing the shit that previous generations had that we assume we invented. At least I assume we invented. Maybe, maybe it's just me. But either way. Very cool, brought to you by eBay. And, uh, yeah. Hope you have a beautiful evening.